Hi YouTube, how you doing? And today we're gonna to look at nine SQL Server performance tuning tips designed to make your queries go faster. They're really easy, they're really simple. So anyone at any stage of their SQL journey can implement them right now. As with all my tutorials, I've broken them down into chapters and where relevant, I've provided a link to a more thorough tutorial for you that you can just link to. Appreciate some feedback, hit me in the comments, subscribe for me, like the video, most of all, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. For this tip, we're gonna look at this view that SQL Server provides that shows any indexes that could be applied, which would improve performance on queries that we have. So just one thing on this, this is cleared on SQL Server restart, whether your server's restarted or your service is restarted. So at the minute, this will be empty, as we can see here. Now I'm gonna run a query, a nice simple query, where I'm filtering on link type IDs equal to three. I've got my execution plan on, and that recommends an index. So now if I look at this view now, I can see it's suggesting an index. If you head over to the Microsoft KB on this, we've got, I'll provide the link below, but it provides a really handy little script that you can run that adds a few more little bits of information where we can create our statement if we wanted to. But here it is right here, and I can run that, and kindly provides us with a nice create index statement. So I'd change the name of this, but it shows us we're just applying it to link type ID with creation date, because that satisfies our query here. So let's, I'll apply that. Now if I run that same query again, It's using index seek, which is what we want, and it's using the index that we want. It's already improved the performance of our query perfectly. Now here's the thing. Over time, that query might change and we might want post ID and related post ID included in that. So if, now if I run that, we can see the execution plan is another index that needs to be applied. So if we jump back to this window here, and I'll grab that statement there, I'm gonna comment that out. I'm going to run it again. It's now removed that initial index because that's already been applied so we don't need that and it's changed it and it said we should be applying post ID and related post ID to our query which is great. So I'm now going to run this. And I'm going to apply this index. Now this leads me on to my next tip. If you look at the two indexes they're almost identical. So you've got post ID and related post ID included here when you haven't here. So this is a superseded index. It supersedes this one here. So we should drop that. We don't need that first index because this adds overhead to all our queries. If we're writing to, to this table, it's got, in, it's got to update these two indexes. It's got to rebuild them overnight. And in short, we want it to be as lean as possible. So we only want this one index. So let's have a look at the table. It's on post, post links. And we can see we've only got the one index and the cluster key. So now if I run this again with my execution plan, it's using the index that we've just created. You can see right down there on the object. If I run this, we also won't be having any suggested indexes and I'd hope this will now be empty, which it is. So all our queries are satisfied just by one index. So the tips from here to remember, use this view, apply any indexes, but you shouldn't just blanketly apply them all. Remove, your, super, remove any indexes that are superseded from other ones. Here we've got a simple set-based example where we're gonna update everyone's score from 12 years ago, from the 1st of January to the 1st of Feb. And we're gonna use set-based logic for it. So I'm gonna run that. And it's gonna grab all the rows and update them at the same time in one transaction. So you can see here, six seconds, fully completed. So now let's go and look at the cursor example. 
what this is going to do, this is going to grab exactly the same set and it's going to then go into the cursor and it's going to update them one at a time, which is what cursor is. It's going to loop through and it's not efficient for SQL Server. So before we add six seconds, set based logic is simple, it's efficient and it performs really, really well. Row based logic is more complex, the performance is poor. As we can see, we're still 48 seconds in, it's still running. Cursors are great for some things, they're not great for updating large amounts of rows. So this tip, change these updates to be set based for far quicker. Look, six seconds down here, and we're still running at one minute. So this performance tuning tip is having a look at the execution plan, if especially you've got long running queries. So I'm gonna refresh the indexes on this table and we can see we've just got cluster key on ID. I'm gonna run this query here and we can see it's just taking a long, long time. In some cases, this query might run on for ages and ages that we can't complete the execution of it. Um, if we could, we could put the execution plan on and we could see exactly what it's doing. But if that isn't the case, what we can do is we can press Control and L and SQL Server will tell us what the problem is with it. So in this case, I can right click, I can look at my index details. We can see we could suggest in an index there. So this tip is all about using the execution plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that index. I'll pause the video because I imagine this is going to take some time. And the index has finished applying two minutes, six seconds. So now we've got, I can scroll down to the same query here, or just use the one up here. We can run the query and it's going to take very quick, three seconds. Is it any quicker the next time around? It is straight away and we can look at the execution plan and it's using the index that we've just applied. Fantastic. So the next tip on this, index your joins, which is what we've done here. We've indexed the post ID on the comments table. Because although we're not filtering on it, this is our filter is on the ID table, on the, the, the ID column on the post table, we've still got to scan through millions of rows probably. How many rows have we got in the comments table? 24 million rows. So nice and simple, we're indexing our joins as the next tip for performance tuning. This next tip is a really nice simple one and it's upgrading the compatibility level. So if we go to properties and options, we can change it here. And we can change it to 2019 because this current version is 2019. If you wanted the code for that, we can script it. Because with every version of SQL Server, they add improvements, they add new features. And some of those features will be either fixes or improvements to the Cardinality Estimator, which improves query performance. So it's well worth doing. I have done a full tutorial on this, which I'll link to, because there's a few things you've got to check before upgrading it. But if possible, always upgrade to the latest version if it works for you. And in this SQL Server performance tuning tip, we are going to look at how to make your queries use an index where sometimes they don't. And in this case, we're going to look at the like operator. So this is one query. And here's our other query. So we've got the wildcard at the start of our query here, and it's going to produce a fair chunk of rows, 10,914. And if we look at the execution plan, we can see that it's doing an index scan because it's going through the whole index. Because we're asking SQL to look at the display name column and look for anything where TOM exists in there. Now, if we don't need to do that, if we just want people's names where their name's Tom, we, we should be removing the wildcard at the beginning because then that allows SQL Server to use an index like this. It's quicker, and we're now doing an index seek. And that's fantastic. There's a downside to this. The number of rows returned won't be the same. 
because if something has got a TOM in the display name, that will appear here and it won't appear in here. So you have to be careful when doing it. But the point of this tip is if you're using like, we can use an index here by removing the wildcard. The other thing to do is set statistics time on. So then you can see exactly what your query is doing from a performance perspective. So we can look at the messages here and we can say overall, this is our CPU time. This is our elapsed time. And with when we run this one, and we can do this with any query we want, and we should be doing it really. We can look and we can see that's a huge performance improvement. So if this query is being called millions of times, then that's going to be a huge performance improvement on CPU and duration. This next tip, it isn't a performance tune-in tip, it's a proactive practice that you should put in and it starts to utilize extended events. So we can target poorly performed routines. In this case, I'm looking at queries that take over 20 seconds. They could be reads over 100,000. We've also got one down here for timeouts. These should be proactively checked, reduced and removed. I've got other tutorials on this that I'll link to, so you can go and set these up, put them in your environment. They're extremely lightweight. And we can look down there and we can see even some of the tutorials I've been doing been taking far too long and they're showing up here so we can then go in there we can have a look at the code if it's a stored procedure we can have a look at the object name and we can tune it and improve our environment improve our CPU and reduce the reads